So another progression um, beyond the ones we talked about would be adding in even more movement and, and more uh, ways to challenge your balance through some reaching exercises. Okay. Um, one great drill you can do as a tennis player, um, because it is important that if you are reaching for a ball that you got to maintain your balance, is a multi-directional reach with your tennis racket. So Mike is going to balance on his leg, on his right leg, and he's just going to go down and try and reach straight forward toward that cone under control and come back up. Then he's going to reach diagonal across his body and come back up. Sh should his foot stay facing the same direction? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. As he's reaching, if you notice there, his hip, knee, and foot stayed in a straight line, which is excellent. Nice. All right. What you don't want to have happen is for him to rotate while he reaches. That can be something that can set you up for knee, knee problems, um, ankle problems, hip problems. If you have that rotation, that's a sign that you do lack some stability in that okay. area. So he's, so, he's a set, so he's keeping us from the hips down in line and then doing the turning and reaching with his upper body. Exactly. Okay. And then you can switch it up by switching your hands so that you're reaching with your opposite hand so you have a little bit different rotational component. Okay. And you want to do both hands on both legs with this. Uh, okay. Again, you know, high repetition, maybe trying to go back and forth three times with each hand um, and then switch legs. You know, so you're building up some fatigue as well with the exercise and challenging yourself in a fatigued state. A lot of injuries occur later on in the match when you're fatigued. Sure. So you want to make sure that you're fatiguing yourself while still keeping that good technique to, to get the, a good benefit out of it. So what parts of the body specifically would you typically use this type of exercise to help prevent injury or, or treat uh, injury? Definitely, first and foremost, the knees. Okay. Uh, knees and also at foot and ankle. Because you're working so hard on coaching and making sure that the knee stability is correct, that there is no what's called valgus, meaning the knee collapsing in toward the other, um, okay. that the heel is, is th with this one, the heel is staying down because you're just working on a single leg squat. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get too much up on your toes. Now, in an athletic position, you're going to be on your toes. But for training purposes with this, you want to be on a flat, stable foot and making everything else do the work. Okay. Um, but it's great for the uh, hip as well. You know, doing this exercise, you're working the glutes, you're working the lateral hip muscles, um, you're working the quads, the calves, and then you're working also the co upper core with the reaching component, being able to sure. come back in a stable position. Okay? One other progression that Mike could do is to involve a little more of a squat would be to using cones or cups, tennis balls, you move everything closer and he has to do a deeper squat and go down and pick up the cone and put it back down. Okay. So go ahead and reach down for the first one. Okay. And putting it back down. And then he goes to the next one. And again, you're reaching with both hands going both directions so that you're challenging yourself in all planes of stability. I think it's great that uh, we're demonstrating so many exercises and kind of ways of strengthening and, and rehab without any like big weights or like equipment or mm -hmm. anything fancy. It's all pretty simple. Definitely. Stuff. These are things you can do on the court easily. You can do in your home. Sure. All right. And you can just use things you have around the house to, to help you with. That way you can get the most out of them. It's great. Um, in general, you know, it's, it's very important to do core, uh, core exercises and balance exercises just to put all the components of strength and stability together so that the body is working together in unison like it is on the court and being stable so that when you are putting it at the demands of the sport such as tennis or any sport you play, volleyball, baseball, that you are having a stable body, that you're being balanced mm -hmm. and symmetrical so that all of your movement patterns are efficient and working properly so that it doesn't lead to compensations which could lead to other body parts and muscles and tendons breaking down. So ideally you want to work your body uh, just as hard off the court as what you plan on using it on the courts in exactly. order to avoid the, the strains and, and injuries. You've got to prepare your body to handle the stresses and the skills of the game of tennis sure. through your training. Good stuff. Thank you.